software make a difference in how products sound? Well, our question, and it's a good one, comes from Bruce. Bruce. Sorry. Bruce. Bruce in Athabasca. Athabasca. I can't talk today. Athabasca, Canada. It's a mouthful. Software synergies. This fall, I updated my Mac OS to the latest version and later updated Rune, which is a, a music management program, kind of like a fancy version of iTunes, to the latest version. This update seemed to thin out the sound and make it more brittle, bright, and on some songs, like uh, Costello's Allison, piercing. Bass was also less present. I have not been seduced into late night listening since. No hardware changes were made. Um, is it possible that software synergies or interactions can affect sound qualities? You bet your sweet bippy it can. Uh, in yesterday's Ask Paul, we, we kind of touched on the subject a little bit where we have different compiles of high-level language into lower-level FPGA language. And each time we compile it, it sounds different. Now, one would think, and well, let, let me explain what that actually means, because a couple of you asked about that, and it's a, it, it's a, it's a really good question. Hey, Nipper. A compile is the way that a high-level language, in this case, the language is called C, is taken down to a lower level language, which is called assembly, that the FPGA can understand. So the, our, our computers and our machines run on this very low level language, which is basically you know routing things here and there and doing whatever it does. Humans, uh, in fact, our chief engineer, Bob Stadther, can actually write in assembly as, as a number of, of software engineers can, but generally people write in these higher level languages which are closer to English. They, oh, um, you know, if-then statements, uh, set a timer, these kinds of high level uh, commands coupled with the proper syntax in, in C will instruct the machine how to do what it needs to do. And in this case, like in a field programmable Gatorade that we have, it, it, it's actually a DAC, right? So once you write that high level code, then you need to compile it, narrow it all down into this low level language that the machine can understand. And when we do that, it sounds different. And part of the reason is it's massive complexity. There are millions upon millions of gates that need to be assigned within the Xilinx FPGA. And Xilinx themselves will tell you that every time you compile one of these big devices, it will reroute differently whether where how the signals go. And sometimes it's very efficient, sometimes it's less efficient, and you can set parameters, but essentially each compile is going to be a little different and it sounds different. So what we have to do, instead of pounding on the table and pulling our hair out, right? Um, sorry, makeup. <laughs> um, we, instead of getting all pissy about it, we just go, you know, that's currently the way it is. And so I go in with one of our engineers, Darren Meyer, Myers, and I, uh, we, we listen to those compilers. We listen to all 20 of them. We sit in music room one and we catalog them. This, this group sounds good, this group sounds bad, this group sounds okay. And we keep narrowing them down till we find the one that sounds the most like music. And I know people go, that's, that's, that's BS. I encourage anyone who wants to actually learn, instead of just jumping up and down like a little kid and going, ah, it's BS, oh, bullshit. It's not bullshit, it's true, come. Come, listen. I have never failed to take somebody into our listening room, and I don't mean an experienced listener, from our director of engineering to our sales guys to our admin people, and just sit down, here's a version, here's another version of the same code, and it sounds different. Now, and they've always heard it, every one of them. 
I don't care. The, the UPS driver hears it. This is not subtle stuff, okay? And can we see differences? Sometimes, but mostly not. Now, <clears throat> his question is, is actually even uh, uh, stronger than that, which is he's changed operating systems. So this isn't just different compiles of software. This is different uh, uh, means to process the digital signals within, uh, in this case, the Mac uh, audio engine. And, uh, and we know that that can make a heck of a difference. I'll give you another example. One of the programs that I recommend people use is called BitPerfect. BitPerfect is a $10 program that you can use on your Mac to uh, make things sound better, to, uh, to obviate the need for the built-in Apple audio processing software, which upsamples or downsamples everything to a fixed sample rate something that kind of mucks up the way it sounds. So all this program BitPerfect does is it grabs hold of the digital audio signal before it gets sent in through this long chain that Apple has, and it routes it just to the output. So you get, if you're playing at 176, it plays at 176. If you're playing this type of file, it always comes out you know, at the proper sample rate and bit rate, not processed through the Apple engine. And that's really easy to hear. You can turn BitPerfect on or off, and I guarantee you, you will hear a difference. It's probably the best 10 bucks anybody could spend. But the reason I bring it up is not to try and push the sale of 10 bucks for those guys. The reason I bring it up is because, again, the difference here is in software, a longer path with more stuff or less. And if anything within that path changes, then there's a very good chance that the sound is going to change. So the answer to your question is, yeah, you bet, hell yes. Software changes, sound changes, just the way it is, whether you like it or not. Thanks. Appreciate you watching. Bye.